Hey guys, welcome back to Reignited. Now today we are talking about Hemi VVT operation. Now the reason I decided to make this video is because I feel like there's a lot of people out there who have questions about this VVT system. What is it? How does it work? How does it benefit my engine? But maybe they're a little bit reluctant to ask those questions because other people are so quick to condemn them and say, how could you not know the answer to that? You don't know anything at all. When the reality is, how do we know anything? It's because we didn't know it someone taught it to us, now we know it. That's how it works. So there's nothing wrong with asking any questions. And hopefully today I can explain to you guys all of the concepts behind the VVT system. Now I do want to clarify that I am no sort of camshaft expert. That is not my particular field, but I do understand these concepts well enough that hopefully I can impart that to you guys and we can all be on the same page. With that being said, let's get straight into it. All right, quickly some basics. What does VVT even stand for? Well, it stands for variable valve timing. Now you might've also heard it described as VCT, which is variable cam timing, but essentially it's the exact same thing. Now this is not new technology. It's been around for quite some time. And in fact, you may have originally heard it with a Honda, the VTEC system. Now, special bonus points to any of you who can post in the comments down below what that acronym actually stands for, for the Honda system. I'll tell you right now, it's a little bit of a trick question, but I'll be impressed if any of you actually gets it right. Now, don't Google it. I just want to see your, your attempts down in the comments down below. Now, as regards to the Hemi engine specifically, they added VVT in 2009. So if you have an engine that's older than that, you do not have VVT system on it. If you have one that's 09 or newer, all the way up to the present day, they all have that VVT system. Now, I do want to make an important clarification here that your cam timing has absolutely nothing to do with your ignition timing. Those are two completely separate systems. So variable valve timing, why would we want to vary that cam timing inside our engine? What benefit does that provide? We're going to keep it extremely simple in this video here, but tuners figured out a long time ago that if you advance the timing of the camshaft, you get better low end response. It would produce more torque. But if you would retard the cam, then you could get better top end horsepower, but it was always at a cost of one or the other. So depending upon where they set the camshaft, they could either get good bottom end or they could get good top end. The variable valve timing allows you to have the best of both worlds. It's almost like having two completely different camshafts because in certain situations it can advance the cam, give you that bottom end torque that you're looking for. And then as you go up through the rev range, it can adjust and give you that top end power as well. That's why variable valve timing is such a benefit. Now, I'd love to sit here and tell you that it's all about the horsepower, but to be honest, for most OEMs, they are not using this technology purely about power. They are more so using it about emissions reasons. Now, we're not gonna get deep into the weeds here about what this VVT technology allows them to do emissions-wise, but that's mostly what they're using it to do, not so much on the power side. Okay, first up, we wanna take a look at this 2006 camshaft right here. You can see that the cam sprocket just bolts directly to the end of the cam, and there's not really anything to it. It has these timing marks on the sprocket itself, and it's a very simple design and a very robust design, not a lot to go wrong with it, but there's no way to actually retrofit any kind of a VVT system onto these older Gen 3 Hemis. All right, let's switch over to the 2009 Hemi engine here. This is what's called a camshaft phaser. So it's your cam sprocket, but it's also what allows you to change that valve timing itself. Now the camshaft isn't a whole lot different, but this very front journal here is wildly different than on the pre-09 models. It has these oil grooves right here for oil to pass through. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later. And the actual sprocket for the timing chain itself is much thinner than on the pre-2009 models. So a lot of differences here between the pre-09 and post-09 engines. Now, of course, there are limitations to just having a single camshaft with VVT. As you can imagine, your exhaust and your intake lobes are fixed onto that cam. You cannot operate them independently. So if you advance the intake, you're gonna retard the exhaust. If you advance the exhaust, you're gonna retard the intake. There's nothing you can really do about that. So again, limitations with a single camshaft. That's why engines that have a dual overhead camshaft, like say a Coyote motor, are always going to be more efficient than a single in-block cam can be. There's just more adjustability and more ways for them to make power. Let's talk a little bit more about this camshaft phaser itself. Now, you can see that we have here our crankshaft timing gear and our camshaft sprocket, and those are of course connected by our timing chain itself. Now this chain fixes these two gears in their relative positions. They cannot move. However, 
The center of the cam phaser itself is what is able to shift back and forth. That's what's giving us our variable timing there. Now I was not able to actually verify this number, but it does seem that the consensus is that that phaser is capable of 37 degrees of total sweep back and forth. But that does bring us to our next question. How is that phaser actuated? So this solenoid right here is what controls your VVT system on your vehicle. Now this is what's called an oil control valve. Now this is an electronic solenoid that controls the flow of oil because oil is how this phaser actuates. Now this solenoid goes directly here into the backside of the engine timing cover area and the openings in the solenoid feed this front camshaft bearing which go into those grooves in the camshaft I showed you a little bit earlier. Okay, we can see on this front journal of the camshaft here that it has these grooves where that oil gets pushed into and these holes where it forces that oil into the phaser assembly to actuate it. Okay, I went ahead and took this phaser assembly apart so you guys can have a clear example of what's happening inside here. Now, do not do this to your own phaser. You guys can see these springs here that are inside here. If you take this completely apart, these springs pop out. And I'm not going to say never, but it would be extraordinarily difficult to get this thing all back together again. Now, if you are installing a phaser lock limiter or a lock device, that's a different story. There's a different way to do that. I'll show you a little bit later. Don't take it completely apart like this. Now, if you're wondering, the purpose of the spring assembly itself is to give our phaser a lock point. So if it loses electrical power to that oil control valve system, it still has a mechanical bypass to go to. And what that does is it sets it to full advance on the camshaft. So it gives us our best low end response. That is the default position of our phaser and the springs help accomplish that. But for right now, we're not interested in the springs, so let's move that aside and take a closer look at the phaser assembly itself. So it looks a little bit like an oil pump maybe. You have these openings here, you have these veins here, but it can't spin in a complete circle. It is locked to a certain point. So the center itself can spin, but the outside would remain static here. To hopefully make this visualization a little bit more clear here about how it is not the sprocket that is changing position, but it is the camshaft itself. Notice here, I will hold the sprocket in place and just move the camshaft. The cam is what's changing position, not the sprocket, because again, the sprocket is locked in its relative position to the crankshaft timing gear. So you can see with these veins that they can only move a certain amount back and forth. That is our full 37 degree sweep of our variable timing. Another important thing to remember about this system is that it is variable valve timing. This is not on or off. It doesn't have to be fully advanced or fully retarded. It can be any position in the middle thereof. Anything that the programming wants of it, it can keep it right there, no problem at all. And it'll accomplish different things at different RPMs. So how is it that this phaser is achieving the relative position it's looking for? Well, we talked about that oil control valve sending pressurized oil to this phaser assembly. Now this center portion here has an oil port on either side of each one of these veins that is in here, and it can fill that cavity with pressurized oil that pushes against that vein and helps it to achieve the position it's looking for. So we talked about it a little bit already, but when that oil control valve is at 0% pulse width modulated, that means that the camshaft phaser is sitting in the full advanced position. It's basically resting against that spring pressure, locking it into place. Now, likewise, when the oil control valve is at 100% pulse width modulated, the camshaft has performed a 37 degree swing into the full retarded position. Now, obviously that oil control valve has the capability to put it at any point in between those two areas. All right, you understand the basics now. You know what VVT is, you know how it operates, and you know what kind of benefits it provides for your engine. But what are the limitations of this system? What are the drawbacks? Well, we all know how important engine timing is. The correlation of the camshaft to the crankshaft is so important on any engine. And the Hemi, like many engines, is what's called an interference engine. That means that if you were to break a timing chain, your piston would come up and smack a bunch of valves and there'd be all sorts of damage in there. So the relation between these two has to be kept correct. Now, with that being said, there is a narrow window available between the valves doing their thing and the piston doing its thing for the engine to modify that cam timing just enough to change those characteristics as far as gaining power down low or gaining power up high. It's a small window, but it is what's available because you, again, you don't want that piston to actually touch those valves. 
Now, unfortunately, when you do go to a larger camshaft on your engine, one that provides more lift, well, that is getting more airflow into your engine, which is a good thing, but the valve is also protruding further down into the cylinder than it did before. This means that your already really tight tolerance between the piston coming up and the valve is now non-existent and you can potentially smack that valve. So many of your aftermarket camshafts that you come across for the Hemi engine will also include a phaser limiter or even a phaser lock, which will only allow so much modification so that even though that valve is coming further down into the cylinder, the piston has no chance to smack it on its way up. That is why when you get these big bad boy camshafts for the Hemi engine, they come with a phaser lock system because otherwise you will get that piston to valve contact. So if you are installing a camshaft that is big enough, bad enough to say, hey, this requires a VVT lock in it, that means you are getting rid of your VVT system altogether. It no longer has that capability to give you that power down low. But by mere fact that you are putting this big bad boy camshaft in there, you're saying, I don't care about bottom end power. I'm all about the top end power. Let's focus on that. So that's really the only way to achieve that. Now, if you are looking for something that is better than stock, but still something more streetable, you'll want to look into a camshaft that provides a VVT limiter. What that does is it just narrows the range at which the VVT operates. So you still get that down low and high end performance. So you get the benefits of what the VVT provides, but you don't have to worry about a piston coming up and smacking a valve. For most street vehicles, that's the kind of camshaft that I personally would recommend because I don't think you want to eliminate VVT functionality altogether. I think the cars just run better with them. I think it's more seamless and it's more enjoyable as an actual street vehicle. But if you put a big enough and bad enough camshaft in there, there's really no other option than to lock it out completely. Now for further explanation on how to install a VVT limiter, if you are installing a camshaft that still makes use of VVT and doesn't lock it out entirely, I'm gonna to cut to this clip I did a few years ago when I installed a camshaft on my 392 powered C10. There's a little dowel pin inside here that the tool itself will bracket either side of that dowel pin. Just slide it in there. There's a bolt here at the end. You go ahead and tighten down this bolt and it takes the spring tension off of the phaser itself. So let's go ahead and tighten that down. So we'll go ahead and tighten down this bolt here. It looks like it's a 3 16 Allen. There we go. So that's taking the spring tension off. Now what we need to do is flip it over. And on the back side here, you have all these bolts here. Now where the dowel pin resides here, on the opposite side, this screw, you want to loosen it, but do not remove it. Otherwise this whole thing is gonna go sprawling out of here. You wanna remove all of these. Loosen this screw, but remove the other four screws. And then this whole plate will kind of slide sideways out of the way. And now your little phase limiter tool device here just slips into the opening here. If you look, this is where your tool is bolted to. So it's the next one over and it goes with the indent of the insert facing towards the middle of the phaser. Go ahead and just drop it in there. Slip your cover plate back on. Now the one longer bolt here with the pin that goes down through this hole where your tool is. All right, now with our bolts torqued, all you have to do is remove the tool itself. Undo your spring bolt. Slide it out. And there we go. Our phase is ready for reinstallation and it's locked in place. Now I almost forgot to circle back around to the Honda VTEC acronym. What about you guys? Do you guys think you got that right? Well, it stands for variable timing and lift electronically controlled. Like I said, a little bit of a trick question because they added that and lift in the middle there. Now my guess is it was a marketing choice because VTLEC doesn't sound nearly as good as VTEC, so I think that was probably why they went that route. But anyway, that's what it stands for. All right, you guys, we covered a lot of information about the Hemi VVT system. Let me know, did you learn something? Were you entertained by this episode? I'd love to hear you guys' feedback. In the meantime, I appreciate it. We'll see you next time on Reignited.